Over the last couple of months in my line of work, we've seen a large rise in the number of cases with pancreatic cancer. It's very important to understand that although people, a lot of people are of the sad belief today that cancer just happens and they're told by their medical professionals that it's bad luck and it's uncontrollable and it's not preventable, <clears throat> I have a different school of thought. I believe in nature, I believe in the intelligence of the human body, and I believe that everything that's chemical, if it's balanced with nature, it has more effect on the human body. The very reason that pancreatic cancer is on the rise talks a lot about the kind of food that we put into our system and the digestive system problems that we have. If it was just bad luck, <clears throat> then it would be something that happens all the time and wouldn't just have a spike in, you know, uh, in statistics all of a sudden. But if you look today at people's lifestyles, people are eating more outside food more often. People are eating more restaurant food more often. People are highly acidic. People have digestive issues. They have acidity. They have bloating. They have indigestion, flatulence, constant burping and belching. So something's happening in the body and it's almost always related to your digestive system. Your digestive system has a second brain. It's called your enteric nervous system. Everything that happens in your digestive system is either going to be good for your body or it's going to be bad for your body. After all, the food that we put into our system is either getting digested the right way or the wrong way. So when it comes to pancre uh, pancreatitis or pancreatic cancer, we need to understand that it is inflammation of the pancreas. And when this is constantly pushed onto the human body, inflammation that is not handled, constant acidity, constant indigestion, we have the development of tumors, we have the development of cancers in the stomach and the pancreas and all of these things. Can it be prevented? Absolutely yes. When we have the right environment in our pancreas and our pancreas are behaving the right way, there is no reason that you have to have a pancreatic cancer. Now we just don't look at the pancreas. Unfortunately in today's world, we look at one disease through one framework. We look at diabetes separately, we look at kidney disease separately, we look at heart disease separately, we look at cancer separately. Unfortunately, that's the wrong way of looking at it. When you look at diabetes, we need to understand that most diabetes happens because you have a faulty pancreas. Your pancreas are not producing the right amount of insulin, and that's why we have diabetes, or your cells are not utilizing insulin the right way, which is why we have insulin resistance. When we look at cardiac problems, we only look at the heart. We don't look at how high blood pressure is related to it. We don't look at the amount of triglycerides. We don't look at CRP levels, which is inflammation, the root cause of heart disease. So we separate these bodies thinking and assuming that the human body is like a machine. It's like a car. You take out one part, you fix that one part, and the car is going to function the right way. We are an intelligent combination of neurons, cells, chemical reactions, physiology, biology, emotions, and everything put together. And arrogant human beings like us think that we can separate these things, you know, do like a little paint job on each part and put it back into the system. And that's why today we're getting worse when it comes to healing. We're getting worse when it comes to the amount of cancer and disease. You would think in a world as advanced today with fancy hospitals, fancy research centers, that disease should be decreasing. Is it decreasing? Absolutely not. It's getting worse and worse. Because let me tell you right now, no one, none of those research companies are looking for, your, for a cure. There is no money in finding a cure. Think about it, guys. We've advanced. We've put people on the moon. We have artificial intelligence. We have all of these things, and yet they can't find a cure to things like diabetes, cancer, thyroid, and all of these things. We're being fooled. So if you think the cure's out there, no, the cure is within you. Yes, we use conventional medicine. We use doctors. We use medicine. We use chemo, radiation, everything to assist us with the problem that we have. But if you think it's going to cure you, absolutely not. You take the medicine, medicine, the cure is going to be the lifestyle changes you make at a root cause level. So when it comes to pancreatic cancer, let's understand what the pancreas do. The pancreas are situated under upper abdomen, a little bit close to the liver. What it does is it produces, it has two functions, exocrine and endocrine. Exocrine means it is producing hormones externally and endocrine means it has the ability to produce hormones internally as well. Now your pancreas have an important function of producing digestive enzymes. The food that comes into your system has to be digested. 
You have digestive enzymes like amylase, which has the function of breaking down carbohydrates. You have trypsin, which has the ability of breaking down protein. You have lipase, which has the function of breaking down fat. There are many other enzymes, but we're just going to talk about these three in the pancreatic function. Now, if you do not produce the right amount of enzymes, you are unable to digest your food the right way. Now, there's a problem over here. So, for example, food comes into your system, it comes into your pancreas. Your pancreas need to secrete these digestive enzymes, which are rich in electrolytes, which are highly alkaline because of the sodium bicarbonate ions they contain. So, the gastric juice, which is highly acidic, before it enters your small intestines, that's where the assimilation happens through the, uh, through the duodenum. Basically, this gastric juice has to be converted into alkaline. If it does not get converted into alkaline and it goes as acidic into your intestine, we're destroying gut bacteria, we're destroying our gut lining, we're killing most of the vitamins and nutrients, and we don't have the right assimilation. So look at the intelligence of the human body. Now, I want you to picture your pancreas. There's a pancreatic duct that connects to your gallbladder, your bile duct. These two ducts connect together to produce bile that breaks down fat and the pancreatic enzymes that I just spoke about. So the food, these enzymes act upon the food, prepares it to go into your intestine, and that's perfect digestion. Now the problem with pancreatitis and pancreatic cancer is these enzymes are either too less or before they reach the intestine, they start causing inflammation and damage in the pancreas. Now these enzymes are meant to be activated to perform their function at the right pH level in the intestines. But today, because of inflammation, too much of coffee and tea, acidic food, improper sleep, pollutants, contamination in the food that we eat, irritants like wheat, refined sugar, white salt, these pancreatic enzymes, and because of that, we have gallbladder stones that they block the bile duct. And because of that, you have something called bile reflux. The same way our body throws up acid reflux, this bile and pancreatic enzymes cannot come together to go into the intestine. They get blocked. They get blocked in the duct. It's not supposed to be activated in the duct. It's supposed to be activated in the small intestine. When it gets activated in the duct because it cannot flow naturally, it starts causing inflammation in your duct. It literally starts eating your own duct tissues. And that causes necrosis, which is injury to your cell, inflammation, which is pancreatitis, which is very, very painful. And because this inflammation continues, you have mutations of cells and the growth of a tumor. We have a blocked pipeway. If we unblock that pipeway, which happens in a healthy body, which means if we don't have gallstones or we take care of gallstones, we allow bile to flow down, we like allow the pancreatic enzymes to flow together into your intestine, change the pH value from acidic to alkaline, and you have proper digestion. So you see, you create a block because of poor lifestyle. Let's get straight into the solution. This is why we have inflammation. So people who have coffee after coffee, low water intake, you're building up such an acidic body that your pancre pancreas have to produce more and more enzymes. It has a life. Sooner or later, it stops producing the right enzymes, which is why at some point your doctor or nutritionist will make you take digestive enzyme supplements because your pancreas are so weak that we need to put these enzymes into you naturally to help you digest your food, to save your pancreas, to save your gut. That's the exocrine function. The reason I'm explaining it in detail is because when you understand how the human body works, then you start doing the right things. If you don't understand, you don't do it. That was exocrine. Endocrine, look at the beauty of the human body. Endocrine, your pancreas produce alpha, beta, and uh, these cells which also produce and delta cells, which produce insulin. Your beta cells in the pancreas has the responsibility of producing insulin. Today, everyone with diabetes is only looking at sugar levels, high, low, high, low, adjusting your medication according to that. No one is looking at the health of your pancreas, how acidic you are. If you can repair your beta, your, your beta cells, you start producing the right amount of insulin, especially if it's type 2 and not type 1. But we don't look at acidity in diabetic patients. We don't care about that because there's an antacid that will take your relief away, that will give you relief. And we constantly destroy the endocrine function of the pancreas. So the root cause of your diabetes is happening at a cellular level or at your pancreas level. And we're not talking about the health of the pancreas in any treatment today. 
So when you look at the endocrine and the exocrine, that's the, that's the value of your pancreas. You cannot live a normal life if your pancreas are going to be destroyed. No amount of surgery is going to help. Yeah, it's going to prevent the tumor from spreading. But it's all about digestion. It's all about keeping your gallbladder clean, inflammation levels low, your acid levels low in your pancreas. Then you can digest your food beautifully, absorb nutrition, make use of vitamins, minerals, and create an environment which allows weight loss, immunity, and basically the, su the sustenance of all your organs. So let's go straight into what causes inflammation in the pancreas. Constant intake of coffee, tea, stimulants, Red Bull, aerated drinks, white sugar, white salt, anything that irritates the cellular lining of any organ in the human body. NSAIDs, these are painkillers. Take a painkiller if you have to, but some of us have gotten so used to the quick fix, we keep popping painkillers, never trying to get to the root cause of what our pain is. All of that is causing inflammation in your pancreas. Estrogen dominant treatments. So all the young girls out there who are put onto birth control pills and just told that this is your way, this is your solution, you're creating estrogen in your body, which is irritating your pancreas as well. Then you have steroids. I'm not saying everyone on steroids have to jump off it. You may need it. It may be life-saving for you, but you've got to be aware that if you are on steroids, how are you managing the side effects by reducing inflammation in the human body and reducing acidity? A decrease in enzymes. When we're constantly overeating, when we're constantly eating without chewing, we make our pancreas produce more enzymes. And these enzymes slowly decrease. The less enzymes we have, the more load you have on your pancreas, the more impact it has on inflammation and digestion, which is why constantly chewing gum is the worst thing for you. Why? It doesn't matter if it's sugar-free or not. When you're constantly chewing, you're signaling every time saliva is produced, it is signaling to your digestive system to start the digestive process. So you're unnecessarily producing digestive enzymes when there's no food in your system. It's like a quota. You want to keep these digestive enzymes for only meal times to break down the food that you eat. Okay, so what's the solution? Raw foods again, fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, a low salt diet. I don't like a low salt diet. I like the right salt diet. So move away from all your refined salts and move into your pink salts or your rock salt or your black salt because these are salts which balance inflammation in the human body and are rich with trace minerals rather than going... Rather than going low salt, you want to go right salt. A lot of people say low fat reduces inflammation in the pancreas. I'm against low fat. I'm, I'm for the right quality of fat in the right quantity because you need fat in the body to produce hormones. Now, we've now seen that the pancreas produce endocrine and exocrine hormones. So you need the right amount of fat in the body. So we're looking at unrefined, filtered, cold-pressed, coconut oils, MCT oils. We're looking at your mustard oil, your peanut oil, all of your olive oil, but which is of top quality and not refined. We're looking at pure ghee. All of these reduce inflammation in the human body. We're looking at cruciferous vegetables like cauliflower, broccoli, radish, cabbage. All of these are sulfur-rich vegetables which reduce which reduce inflammation in the pancreas and are loaded with antioxidants. You're looking at things like lemon, turmeric, ginger, coriander, cardamom, everything that you eat in a balanced Indian diet. But the moment you start looking at junk food, it contains nothing that I'm talking about. And that's why it creates inflammation and that's why it's so bad for your health. We look at low stomach acid, which is so dangerous for people today because if you have low stomach acid, you're unable to digest your food and all the pathogens, germs, and contamination in your food. These pathogens and germs, if not broken down by your stomach acid, will create inflammation in your pancreas. And that's why we see people with H. pylori bacteria. Okay, these are dangerous bacteria which can cause cancers if not handled the right way. So we need the right amount of stomach acid, which happens when we consume things like lemon, apple cider vinegar, ginger, things that stimulate your gut, back, not your gut bacteria, your, low, your stomach acid naturally the right way, which is why if you're constantly trying to be alkaline, that's very dangerous for you. During meal times, you want to be acidic. Post meal times, you want to be alkaline. Collagen is excellent for people who have pancreatic issues, pancreatic inflammation, and pancreatic cancer as well, because these peptides are very easily broken down by the pancreas and the digestive system, actually healing the inflamed lining of the pancreas. Uh, technically, 
you want to look at prevention of diseases because when it hits pancreatic cancer, these things are very, very difficult to control. Not impossible, but difficult because the first thing that your doctor is going to tell you to do is eat more and eat more and eat more. And eating more is going to create more damage because everything goes through your digestive system. People with pancreatitis and pancreatic cancer need to understand one thing. Protein food is very, very difficult to digest. And yet, most doctors keep telling people with cancer, have protein, have protein, have protein. You will create more inflammation in your pancreas. If you are going to have protein, you have to have protein in 8 to 12 hour intervals, which means you have protein and for the next 8 to 12 hours, you don't have protein. So that you don't put that burden of too much of protein for your pancreas to produce those enzymes which you're already lacking to break it down. And sometimes you've got to look at taking digestive enzymes. Digestive enzymes are also found in natural foods like papaya. Pineapple, apple cider vinegar, yogurt, ginger, fruits. These are great foods to increase the amount of digestive enzymes. But remember, it's not just about increasing the amount of di digestive enzymes. It's about saving the amount of enzymes that you have. So when you drink alcohol excessively, when you smoke excessively, you do all of this junk food excessively, you're just depleting your digestive enzymes. The very things that are required for your prevention of stomach cancers, pancreatic cancers, acidity, bloating, and everything else. So you see, in holistic medicine, it comes down to the root cause. A deficiency of even one enzyme can lead to innumerable problems. And here we are trying to treat everything with chemicals and medicines and everything. Treat it, like I said. I'm not against it. But don't forget that your body has an intelligence which is connected to a deficiency of either a vitamin, mineral, enzyme, or some hormonal imbalance. Have a great day, everyone. Until next time, eat smart, move more, sleep right, and breathe deep.